Mold exposure and mold toxicity is another very difficult diagnosis to pin down. Um, a lot of people will start to notice that their health starts to deteriorate, usually after either moving into a new home or um, after having some kind of flooding occur in the house or leakage in the ceiling, something of that nature. Uh, the reason it can be very difficult to detect is that unless the mold is overtly apparent somewhere, like you actively see black mold in the corner of a room or on the wall, you're not going to know necessarily that it's there. It can be inside the drywall, it can be um, above your ceiling, it, you know, it can be underneath your carpet, um, it can be places where you're usually not looking. So. Um, the biggest things that we see with uh, a lot of mold toxicity and mold exposure is going to be massive fatigue. Some people get urinary frequency, a lot of brain fog. Uh, people develop some sinus issues, uh, a lot of congestion, post-nasal drip, insomnia can certainly uh, occur as well. Um, on labs, generally speaking, we tend to see uh, testosterone levels start to uh, decrease and the estrogen start to increase. Uh, aromatase activity in particular is affected by um, mold, so we start to see that conversion start to occur away from testosterone production. The most difficult parts are really just, again, kind of coming in with the actual interview with the patient, uh, taking that case on really pinpointing okay what's the timeline of when this started did anything change uh, do we have particularly heavy rains how old is the home all of those things are going to have an effect or are you being exposed at work i found a lot of uh, mold patients that have had major exposure to mold uh, and in the workplace um, and a lot of these patients are also very sensitive to like any kind of a mildew or damp smell after a while as well. But we really have to delve into a combination of blood testing and urine testing to see if there are mycotoxins um, in the urine or indirectly if there's anything in the blood that's being affected by mycotoxins. And so mycotoxins are gonna be the breakdown of mold com spore components. Uh, mold spores are incredibly tiny. Um, so they can be permeating through, um, through surfaces you wouldn't normally expect. Uh, and they can be all over the place without you actively visibly seeing um, mold, like visibly growing somewhere. One of the first steps we do if we really have a strong inkling as to, okay, this is likely mold, we go into the testing. Once we get those testing uh, results back, then we need to find out where it's coming from. Where's the exposure occurring? Uh, so we do more advanced testing for the home or the workplace, wherever the most high chance there is of uh, some kind of exposure. We need to make sure that there's some kind of either remediation or the patient needs to move away from that environment completely. Uh, once they're out of the environment, then we're able to really get in and treat. Uh, and part of treating is really going to be increasing detoxification pathways. So really helping to support the liver, making sure we're binding up a lot of these mold spores and pulling them out of circulation. Rechecking labs periodically to see, okay, has the exposure come down from here to here to here? And the amount of time it's going to take is gonna be highly dependent on how quickly they get out of the environment that caused the issue in the first place, how compliant they are with treatment, certainly. But that is a, certainly a very curable um, ailment. Uh, we just need to identify it. And that's one of the most difficult parts as well. A lot of people end up using mold kits they find at Home Depot or they bring in people who are counting uh, mold spores under a microscope, things like that that are very inaccurate ways of measuring it. So we really uh, encourage people to use ERMI testing or Environmental Relative Moldiness Index testing, which is a far more uh, robust method um, for detection because it's taking into account the DNA of all of these different types of mold in the environment. And so once we're able to see that, we have definitive proof um, in the environment and through blood testing, then we really get into uh, helping somebody detox from it.